So at the beginning of this year, we first talked about this concept with our audience when we fully, or we announced our fully updated 2024 piloting AI course and our brand new scaling AI course series, which is available right now. To explain this idea, I wanted to read a really brief excerpt from the announcement, Paul, that you wrote at the time. And in that announcement, in that blog post, you wrote, continuing AI advancements in language, vision, prediction, persuasion, reasoning, decisioning, and action will augment human capabilities and redefine knowledge work at a rate and scale that the economy has never seen. Millions of jobs will be impacted as companies realize the power and potential of AI to drive productivity, efficiency, and profits. Now, we have presented to and talked with thousands of marketers and business leaders over the last year, and we've seen firsthand how executives are scrambling to adapt and devise AI roadmaps while facing complex challenges, including a lack of AI-savvy talent, legacy tech stacks, a rapidly expanding AI tech landscape, fear of change from staff, industry regulations, privacy and security concerns, and mounting competitive pressure. Now, what has become clear is that our mission must evolve to pursue a North Star of accelerating AI literacy for all. We believe you can build a smarter version of any business through a responsible, human-centered approach to AI, but success requires a commitment to AI education and training across the organization. So, Paul, maybe to kick this off, could you just walk us through where this idea came from, why it's so important? It just sounds like it came from this lack of preparedness around AI within all these companies in the face of this massive change headed towards us. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if you're listening to this podcast, you get this, like, you you you're you're obviously taking the initiative to figure this stuff out and think about the level of confidence it gives you to know what's happening in this space and you start to think about your own career differently you think about the challenges in your business differently you think about strategies differently you ask really good questions about the technology you're you're using um and think about if everyone in your organization had that power like <laughs> That's kind of how it works right now is like we go into these companies and we'll meet with, you know, 300 marketers or 500 accountants or, you know, 120 lawyers or whatever it is, whatever the room consists of that day. And every single time, the first thing I tell people is you have to commit to literacy. Like you, you got to start an AI academy in your, your enterprise. You have to build it into professional development. Um, because until we level up understanding, we just develop a baseline understanding of AI, like intro to AI level 101 stuff across the organization, then you're going to keep having these same issues, the lack of AI savvy talent, the fear of change, like until you develop transparency in the organization and start helping people, um, you're going to keep running into these and you're not going to be able to develop optimal strategies and outcomes for your organization. And so I, I just, I think it's so fundamental to figuring all of this stuff out. And the thing, you know, I always, always stress is what we need are people with the fundamental knowledge who then apply their domain expertise to go be the thought leader in, in their company or in their industry. And they, you know, take the lawyer of 30 years who takes an interest in AI or the CFO or you know, the HR person or the marketer, whomever it is, and takes their domain expertise and experience and intuition and layers in an understanding of what AI can do. Now you can, you know, really race forward as an organization. So yeah, I, I just, I mean, I think that it's so important and I, I've found that it's a, it's a message that resonates really well with people. And, you know, I, I do hope that our listeners carry that forward into their own organizations and like sort of be a spark plug to drive um, literacy because I think it just gives people the confidence and it gives people the perspective to work together to solve this stuff. Yeah, and it couldn't be more needed, honestly, because, you know, like we said at the top of the episode, we are having a webinar in two weeks where we're going to unveil the findings of our 2024 state of marketing AI report. And 
If you go to stateofmarketingai.com, you can sign up for that webinar, get a copy of the report. But this year, it's the fourth annual report we've done in partnership with Drift. We surveyed nearly 1,800 marketers and business leaders about AI usage and adoption. And I just wanted to maybe preview a couple stats related to what we just talked about, because every year, a lack of AI education and training is cited as the most common barrier to AI adoption in marketing. And uh, unfortunately, like this year, fourth annual is no different. So from the initial data analysis we've done, as we're finalizing the report, we found that 67% of respondents said that a lack of education and training was the top barrier to them adopting AI in their marketing. And Actually, this number rose slightly from last year. Last year, 64% said it was a barrier. And we also asked outright if respondents' organizations offer AI-focused education and training for the marketing team. Now, collectively, 75% either said, no, there is no education at all. That was about 47%. Uh, 24% said, you know, it's in development. And 4% said they're not sure if training exists. So, Paul, you know, unfortunately, these numbers are not a surprise to me or you, given the dozens, not hundreds of conversations and talks we have with companies. But, I, you know, the numbers are improving, but it's still such a huge proportion of companies that appear not to be making their employees as AI literate as they could be. Yeah, I, I mean, I, again, I think it just comes back to, a lot of the leadership doesn't know to make it a priority. Like if you, if you don't understand like the disruption, if it's treated in silos, like the CIOs owning this and it's not really being decentralized out to the other departments and other leaders. And, um, you know, in, in a lot of organizations we talk to, like they're just not even allowed to use it. Like the generative AI is just turned right. off and they have to make, you know, business cases to even be allowed to have access to the tools. So. I don't know. It's just still so early. We talked about this with that census research last week and some of the other, you know, research about the gaps and the lack of adoption. And I do think that's the issue. Like I, um, I actually just tweeted this morning, I uh, shared something Ethan Malik had tweeted. And I said, like, th this is the same thing we're seeing. There's no change management plans. There's no AI roadmaps. There's no education and training. There's no plan to actually scale this stuff. It's just isolated pilot projects and experiments. And at the companies that are doing more than that are, are far ahead and they often feel like they're not. And then we go in there, it's like, no, no, no. Like the fact that you're even doing this is ahead of the curve right now. So yeah, I, I think the, the key here is just take, keep taking the next step on, you know, the literacy, listen to this podcast, listen to these other podcasts, go read stuff, take a course, like keep pushing forward, but bring the people in your organization along with you. Like we, we really need more momentum in these companies to, to start driving the kind of change. Um, and, and I honestly, like just the acknowledgement that the future is going to be uncertain and we got to start trying to solve it together. Amen to that.